morning, everyone. And this is Chad Heinrich. I'm your Arizona State Director for NFIB, the moderator for this very special event. Today we'll be joined by Governor Doug Ducey, who will provide an update on what the state has been doing in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And just as important, the governor wants to engage the small business community on what we need to be doing as we prepare to reopen the economy. Received many pages of questions from our members and we appreciate that. We will have a chance to take some of these live and we will be starting the program in just a few minutes. If you can take this time to mute your phone, very appreciated. In the meantime, I can give you just up uh, on NFIB. We have a couple resources that have been very valuable to members. You can you can see uh, NFIB.com for resources. Uh, when you go to NFIB.com, there's a green button on the right named Coronavirus Resources. That includes five webinars that uh, that we've hosted and the full recordings available to you with, with the slides uh, and the resources provided. In addition, you can find a guide to federal and other fine resources. And we also have some legal resources that can assist you as an employer uh, when you're communicating with your employees about the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, plus there's a frequently asked questions page, which may have a question or two in there that, uh, that you'd be interested. Uh, understanding or about. Further, if you if you want to look for Arizona specific resources, you can go to nfib.com slash az. And if you look under the center section of our website, you'll find a headline uh, for Arizona Business News. The heading is called Arizona Small Business Central for Coronavirus News and Resources. That's a comprehensive uh, set of links to state and federal resources, uh, which may be helpful. Members, it's my to welcome the uh, the governor, Doug Ducey, to today's call. As you know, Doug Ducey was elected as governor in 2014. So this is his sixth year as Arizona's governor. Following a successful career in business, he has brought a much needed change to Arizona government. Several areas where he's been very impactful in streamlining state services, in taxes low, and really supporting pro-business policies that have put Arizona on the top of lists for, for economic growth. So it goes to the governor for his leadership in helping shape Arizona to this point. And during this current pandemic today, the governor has really led our state in this unprecedented time for Arizonans. The governor's worked very hard to strike a balance between protecting public health and maintaining essential services during this time. And truly today, the governor is looking to engage the small business community on what we, we need to be doing as we prepare to reopen the economy. I would also like to welcome key members of the governor's team who are on the call. Deputy Chief of Staff Gretchen Conger, Arizona Commerce Authority President Sandra Watson, and Policy Advisor Ben Blink. With that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome Governor Doug Ducey to provide some opening remarks and really set the stage for how we can help him and his team as we look to restart the Arizona economy. Thanks very much, Chad. I really appreciate it. I want to say good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, as a former small business owner myself, I know what a challenging time this is for everyone in the state of Arizona, especially small and medium business owners. I want to thank you all for your leadership and forging ahead, doing everything you can to keep your employees and the public safe during this emergency. Uh, my number one priority right now is, of course, COVID-19 and public health. And we're going to continue to work, guided by the 
health experts, the Centers for Disease Control, and uh, our partners in the federal government to slow the spread of this virus. We're ramping up testing. We're increasing hospital capacity. We actually have a lot of positive news on that front for the first time in a, in a long time. But as we look ahead, many people are asking, and I want you to know that I'm thinking about it every day, uh, when are we going to get back to normal? And I want you all to know that I want to get back to normal as soon as possible. And I want people to get back on with their lives. Uh, I want to do it at the right time when it's safe and healthy to do that. We issued a, a stay home, stay healthy, and stay connected uh, directive. Uh, it's in place through April 30th. That coincides uh, also with the federal guidance uh, from the White House through April 30th. As we get closer to the date, we're going to be tracking the data even more closely and continuing to work with public health officials. But I, I want to plan ahead and, and be ready when the time comes to start pumping more blood through the artery of, of our economy. And uh, I want to be guided by the thoughts of the people on this call. My team, led by Sandra Watson of the Arizona Commerce Authority and Debbie Johnson of the Office of Tourism, is engaging leaders in many sectors to get feedback on how we can best and appropriately kickstart the economic recovery. Today, I want to hear your feedback and ideas. Uh, so I'm here to listen, and I'll answer any question that anyone has. I'm specifically interested in hearing recommendations for policies, regulatory reforms, other executive actions we can take to set up Arizona's small businesses for success. Our goal is to make the right decisions at the right time while continuing to protect public health. And we're in a different position today than many other states. And it allows us to to think about the future. Of course, we're going to deal with uh, the issues of, of today, but uh, when, when we do this, uh, I, I want to do it the right way. I feel in many ways Arizona was leading the nation uh, as the pandemic hit our country, and I want to lead the nation as we come out of this pandemic. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Chad Heinrich on behalf of uh, NFIB to kick off our, our discussion. Chad? Well, thank you. Thank you, Governor. And, and first off, I really do want to thank you for looking to us, Arizona's small businesses, to provide recommendations and expertise on how the state should approach the needed economic recovery to battle and, and beat the pandemic. I, I think really, and in so many ways, so many of your actions have been timed and I think this is the timing on this conversation is really perfect as well. We 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 think we see you know, new cases may be starting to slow from my, what I see in reports, and uh, you know we see about nine of ten cases are coming back negative. So you know hopefully this is the end of the beginning, and um, to me the next six to ten weeks will be crucial not just for the health of the people of Arizona but also for everyone's livelihood. So I think the timing of the conversation is perfect, and it's the perfect way to kick off the dialogue with small business. Um, in your letter yesterday, you stated that well that we need to consider public health guidance in everyday business practices. And um, I do have one member that uh, emailed a question in. His name is Mike from the company Rotofab. Uh, Mike had a suggestion on a policy and actually has some good background on what he's done as a business owner to keep uh, his employees and the public safe. Mike, are, are you on the line? Mike, we can't hear you. If you press star six, yes. you'll be able to unmute your line. Yes, I am, Chad. I think you, oh, perfect. Thanks, Mike. So, as a manufacturer, first we're fortunate that we don't rely on walk-in business or a storefront. However, our existing work environment didn't provide safe distancing. So to combat that issue, we added more restrooms. We created new workstations, which allow each employee to work well separated from fellow employees. And we devised a system to move parts through the various processes without direct interaction between employees. Uh, further, each employee was provided with a, a refrigerator, a microwave, rubber gloves, masks, 
leach water, et cetera. So each employee also now has a unique entrance to reduce interaction, and we've reduced or, or we've eliminated our common areas. So all these changes required some remodeling, so new shop floor layout and workflow, additional processing equipment, additional consumable supplies to keep each workstation stocked up. So even with all of our efforts, we weren't able to bring back all of our employees. So as we move forward, we need to, to, come to devise plans to do this, which uh, just more money and more time. Uh, so meanwhile, we sell in a competitive environment, so we can't just raise our prices to cover the costs. So that's a little background on where we're at and where we're heading. But my question is, is there a stimulus program that the state could implement, which would help offset some of these costs or, or, or provide some funding to make these changes? And would the state be able to work with the county, perhaps in terms of uh, doing something with our property insurance? Everybody has property insurance due on May 1st. And, and with the problems we're having, that really comes at a bad time for us. Well, uh, th thank you, Mike. Uh, thank, thank you for chiming in. Thanks for the good work you're doing in your manufacturing facility. It's always been my mindset that Arizonans are, are smart and they have common sense and uh, they can uh, figure a lot of this out if we can just make sure we have the proper hospital capacity and supplies for our doctors, nurses, and emergency medical responders. I think you bring up a good point as to what is this going to look like going forward. Uh, once we have the statistics and data that will allow us to start pumping more oxygen into the economy, I think we're going to face uh, some pushback from the public. Uh, there are a large percentage of people out there that just have a tremendous fear and anxiety uh, because so much is still unknown. And I think that idea of setting up uh, different workstations, available bathrooms, things where employees feel uh, not only valued but protected will be part of this. And when you get to funding on this, uh, th there's a couple thoughts that I have. One, I applaud the federal government to some degree because Traditionally, it takes them so long to act in these situations. Uh, I think they were a little late, but money is flowing right now uh, through the Paycheck uh, Protection Program and through unemployment benefits. I don't know if you've applied for uh, uh, any, anything through the uh, PPE or, or, or the CARES Act. I do know other small business owners that were pinging me yesterday that they were receiving funds around that. There's another package that's coming from Washington, D.C. Of course, the state is on the hook for a, a percentage of the uh, unemployment benefits. And, and right now in Arizona, we are in a uh, strong financial position. Now, just like many of you, we've switched to a near uh, zero revenue model. And uh, no business or, or no state uh, can last for long. On, on, on no revenue, uh, that no revenue is temporary. And what we want to do is get that as close, as back to normal as possible. What I've said is I'm going to use the rainy day fund in our state. I'm going to use available dollars that I have. I'm going to use the flexibility that I'm given from the federal government to make sure that, that no individual falls through the, the cracks uh, through this recovery, and my concern is for small and medium businesses. Uh, the big businesses always seem to find a way through this. They have access to the capital and, and the bankers. So the, the funding part of it is, is something I'm, I'm open-minded to, but I also want to understand and make sure we're utilizing and maximizing everything that's being provided through the congressional programs, because in, in essence, those are state dollars. Those are our dollars that go back to Washington, D.C. They've been appropriated uh, to the states. There's uh, packages for small and medium businesses, and uh, that's where I want to start with the discussion around funding. I think the you, PPP program. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. 
No, go ahead, Bobby. I, I just wanted to, the PPP program, I was finally able to actually put my application in last night. I don't know when that will come into play. And I like the program because it offers incentive to keep employees because a very real thing that we'll face as we come back and, and I had to look at is, do we just clam up and hold on to our dollars, allow our employees to go on unemployment so they're taken care of and kind of wait this thing out? Or do we go out on a limb with our dollars and, and try to get the operation going and keep our employees safe at the same time? So those are very real decisions we have. And, and I agree with you. I, I, I really do applaud the, the part of the program that provides the incentive to keep your employees all of us that have run a business have faced a tough time or a downturn, and we know how people remember uh, how they're treated during that time and the decisions you make uh, as, as an owner. And oftentimes you're put in a position where there are no good decisions available. It's, it's what is the, the less worse decision. So uh, being able to access that, uh, the folks that, that uh, applied for this and were receiving money yesterday that were letting me know are not large businesses. Uh, they were frustrated by the, the form and the amount of information that they had to put in, but the money is flowing, and, and that's the good news. The other good news is I don't want to see anyone unemployed, but we have you know tens of thousands of Arizonans that were working probably at the height of their uh, career in terms of income 45 days ago that today are unemployed with no income. Uh, the, the federal benefits combined with the state benefits are $840 a week uh, per person. And those uh, have been extended from 26 weeks uh, to 39 weeks. Now, I think that that's good news in, in general. My concern for that time extension is that we may not be, I mean, my hope is that we're not in uh, the situation we're in today, 10 weeks from now. And those benefits are, are quite generous uh, and appropriately so because we, this was because government was making decisions that people were becoming unemployed. I just want people to have that incentive to go back to work. And Mike, what you're talking about accessing that PPP program, you won't put your employees in a position where they'll have to leave generous benefits to come back to work. They'll still be in your employ and grateful for it. Thank you for the information. You know, and uh, one one point that Mike Mike alluded to was uh, something that really concerns uh, small businesses, and it's really a pain a pain point, and that's liquidity, uh, which we know that the PPP program is is uh, um, trying to trying to solve. Um, unfortunately, some of the restaurants uh, that I've talked to, you know, they generally don't even have two weeks worth of cash available to uh, to pay employees. Um, so in many cases, I think those those folks will end up uh, into the unemployment situation as as uh, the governor discussed. Um, but with liquidity as, as a real concern for businesses, I did want to uh, call on another member who had submitted a question. Uh, Walter Dudley uh, is on the uh, had a suggestion, Governor, uh, regarding income tax. Hi, Walter. Go ahead, Walter. Walter, Walter, you, Walter, if you hit star you, six, it will unmute your line. Chad, do you have an idea of what the background on that was? You may just want to ask it for him. Yes, actually, uh, uh, Governor, let me let me pull up his question, uh, but it related to the um, estimated tax payments that uh, income tax payments that businesses pay, and so uh, the 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 situation that the small business owner is in right now, the IRS has basically uh, moved all removed all tax filing deadlines from now until July 15th. So 
where I, I, as a small business owner, would typically pay a quarterly estimated tax for 2020. Um, I don't have to make the first two payments, um, the April 15 or the June payment, until July 15. And so with the state uh, continuing to have those quarterly quarterly payments recorded, it puts taxpayers uh, in a difficult position because they would typically utilize their estimated payment to the federal IRS to, as a basis for what their estimated payment in Arizona should be. And so Walter's suggestion um, was that the state follow the Fed and uh, and delay income tax payments until July 15th. Obviously, that creates a revenue problem for the state, um, but it would solve a, a, a small liquidity issue at the small business level. So I want to say thanks to Walter for the idea. Uh, the feds have so much more flexibility here because they can borrow money and print money. Uh, I don't have either of those things available to me. And just like every business owner is trying to figure out how they are going to get through this, and we will get through this, uh, so are we. And I have to have some idea of what our revenue is, what our economy is doing to plan ahead on whatever necessary uh, cuts or uh, extensions and, and proper uses of, of the rainy day fund. One thing I want to say is somebody mentioned uh, restaurants out there, and, and I understand that that industry uh, very well, uh, but it doesn't matter what the business is. I mean, no one plans ahead for zero revenue uh, for an extended period of time. We work very closely with the landlords and the banks so that no one will be evicted, uh, no one will be locked out during this time frame. So I realize it's a struggle out there, and, uh, and we're going to have the lightest touch possible to get through this. So what I want people to do is do what they can, do what's possible. Now, there are business owners that I know uh, that are not applying for these federal funds. Those federal funds are there to allow you to make these payments. And this is true through all 50 states. So please fill these forms out. Uh, do your best on keeping up on your payments. It's like we, we put out an order where no one's going to be evicted from their apartment for 120 days, okay? That was for people that were, had real fear and high anxiety and had gone from, you know, making a, a good income to having none. Well, today they're making $840 a week from the government. I expect them to remit their rent. Uh, the rent's not going to be forgiven. Uh, landlords will make a decision if they're going to tack it on at the end or uh, amortize it over the, the life of the lease. Uh, and it will be the same way on, on some of these other issues that people are facing around their payments. But please take advantage of these uh, federal and state programs. Do your best as, as best you can on, on your, your bills and my objective is that we get on the other side of this pandemic and your business begins to grow again. Uh, this is Walter. Can you hear me now? Yep. Hi, Walter. Greetings. Uh, Chad, you summarized my uh, question on the uh, estimated payments, and I appreciate the governor's response. I do have a second issue I'd like to raise, and that has to do with the income tax conformity dance that we do annually. There, uh, I would love to have the governor be able to come up with this, a plan to make that less of a problem, because when we do this, are we going to conform with federal or are we not, or to what extent? There's a lot of uncertainty, and sometimes it'll drag on into the following year. So I'm, I'm thinking that there are, ought to be enough bright people to help with the some analysis of what can we do to make conformity a more reasonable process each year so with that i appreciate the time thank you walter thank you. very appropriate question for april 15th we'll get you information on <laughs> on uh the conformity and and the easiest ways to to comply i appreciate it <laughs> thank you that's that's a that's a great 
point, Hunter, is that uh, isn't it ironic we have that question on April 15th? Um, really appreciate that, uh, Walter. Um, if we have qu uh, time for one more question, Governor, um, sure. we, I do have Brad Scott from Halstead Bead in Prescott. And um, he had, I think, a suggestion that would be helpful moving forward. Hi, Brad. Hey, how are you doing today, Do uh, Governor Ducey? Real good, real good. Yourself? How are things oh, in Prescott? Um, well, it's kind of quiet up here. We don't have a whole lot of coronavirus ca virus cases. However, uh, we're still following all the procedures that are recommended by your office. And i um, grateful for the opportunity to not so much ask a question, but maybe pose a recommendation. Sure. So, um, you know, there's a lot of discussion about essential versus non-essential businesses. And I think if you talk to the people that are receiving the paychecks, every job is essential. And in our experience, um, especially within our own office and around town, businesses want to offer a safe environment for their workers and their customers. Um, we need a clear, consistent, easily understood set of guidelines to implement safety protocols across the board. Um, if you could, uh, please advise all Arizonans on how to safely move forward while opening the economy as soon as possible. I think that would have a, a much better impact on the overall recovery for Arizona than discussing the payroll protection program loans or uninsurance and unemployment insurance, you know, just focusing more on, on allowing people to get back to the work that they really want to be doing. Well, thank you, Brad. I appreciate the recommendation and I agree with you that every job is essential uh, especially to the person that, that holds it. If you look at our guidance, we tried to be as broad as possible uh, to give employers the flexibility while allowing individual Arizonans to make the choice that they thought was appropriate for them. Uh, so far, we've been successful, and I know it's different uh, in uh, our out counties, rural Arizona, uh, Yavapai versus, say, a Greater Phoenix or, or a Tucson. Um, there's a couple of things here at, at play. One is, of course, the, the very real issue of COVID-19 and public health. The other part of it is, is the public perception. I mean, there is a real uh, large percentage of, of our population that does not want to uh, leave their, their home at, at this time. And of course, if you want to be at home, this is the time to be there. But as we begin to reopen parts of our economy, and, and we'll do it incrementally, think of it as pumping more oxygen in, into the chamber uh, of, of our economy. As, as we do that, we'll want to do it in a safe way, continue our, our measurements, because COVID-19 won't be going away anytime soon, we can just make the case that we can properly manage it and mitigate it here in the state of Arizona up until we have a, uh, a vaccine for it. So along the way, we'll want to do the, the proper steps and the proper openings. And I think that many consumers are going to judge for themselves, just like you oftentimes have a first impression of a restaurant as you walk into it. Uh, uh, in terms of the cleanliness and the, the level of service and, and the, the friendliness of, of the employees. Uh, what people are going to be looking for is uh, proper sanitation. They're going to be looking for social distancing for the, for, for the near future. Uh, and the, the use of masks where uh, appropriate, uh, the fact that you've thought things through when people are standing in lines or cashing out, that you make it very easy for people to pay by credit or digitally so we don't have to have paper and uh, silver uh, money exchange hands. I think these are all things that will give people confidence that they can reenter uh, the economy at, at the appropriate time. What I want to do is, is just what I said. I, I want this to happen as soon as possible, uh, but it's got to be the appropriate time. We've, we're in alignment with the federal guidance, which lasts through April 30th. Now, that's, that's 15 days. Uh, in any normal setting, that would be here very quickly. In this setting, 15 days seems a long ways away to me. But we'll know a lot more a week from today and certainly uh, much more two weeks from today. So I want you to, to work with, with Chad and the leaders at NFIB and people inside your industry. 
for what a reopening would look like for, for your industry and maybe uh, standards that you could hold yourselves accountable to. Uh, and, and we'll have some ideas, of course, from the governor's office. But to me, those of you that are in the private sector uh, n know the best thing to do. You're, you're hearing the feedback or the concerns from, from your customers. And those are the things that we want to address going forward. You know, people are talking about what's normal going to look like. Is there a new normal? I, I think the fact of that matter is that no one really knows. Uh, I do think Arizona is going to be in a position to come back stronger than it was before, uh, but it, this has been difficult, and, uh, and I want to uh, address that. But, Brad, I, I want you to know that I agree on uh, how essential each and, and every job is that, that's out there, and I, I want to see them come back and uh, multiply in an even better position than they were 45 days ago. And, and, and if I might interject one more thing, um, <clears throat> talking about moving forward, there's been a lot of fear mongering, unfortunately, about who is really absolutely deathly vulnerable to COVID-19. And I think that the transparency about the vulnerability factors that really affect people's, people's susceptibility to it could be given a lot more um, attention because there are people that are extremely vulnerable and they do need to be taken care of in very serious fashion. However, there are a lot of other people out there that are not as susceptible to real danger to their lives, but just getting sick, which is an unfortunate fact of life, but that's kind of how this is going to roll out. And if there was more information about that, some of that fear might be relieved so that the economy could come back at, a, at a, an easier pace. Thanks, Brad. I agree 100%. I think you'll see our messaging has been consistent out of the governor's office to the facts. Uh, I think it has been more the, the mainstream media or the national cable news media. I mean, we really had a dichotomy. The people that are most vulnerable are the people that we love and value the most, our, our parents and our grandparents, and they haven't been all that concerned about COVID-19. And the people that are... are in harm's way the least are the youngest among us and often they're the ones that are, are have the most anxiety so we're going to continue to, to message that um, I'm not going to count on the the national media to be any help with that uh, but we will work uh, whether it's from Arizona together.org azhealth.gov uh, any uh, thing that we're in charge of our our social media sites we're getting those facts out there, and I do think as we head into uh, these upcoming months, certainly uh, I'm hopeful for what's possible in, in May, even more so uh, for June. I think it'll just be that you know, continuing opening of, uh, of opportunities here in, in a way where people can kind of see, uh, see proof in, in numbers and uh, more voices added to the choir about what proper and safe behavior is going forward. So uh, I know you think about it every day. I think about it every day. Let's start planning for the future. And at the appropriate time, uh, we'll, we'll be the first ones to say go uh, here. Just uh, like I said, uh, you've been patient. You've been cooperative. You've, you've really operated with common sense. To this point, we, we can and will get through this. Let's just stay together uh, as we get, get to May and June. Well, thank, thank you, sir. You I appreciate those, it. Uh, yes, th thank you very much for those uh, remarks and your leadership, Governor. And the, the, way I, the way I look at it is from a level of confidence. We need, we need to work together, and we, I really appreciate your uh, outreach to the small business community in this effort. But we really need to work together so that we have confidence, both from the employer perspective, the employee's perspective, and then, of course, the customer's perspective so that we can move forward. And I do really appreciate your leadership and, and uh, reaching out and look forward to continuing to work with you and your team. You know, we had, uh, we're, we're out of time, but we had, um, how many pages? I have 14 pages of questions here from members that uh, if you're on the line and you sent a question in, uh, uh, don't worry, we are going to follow up on your question. Um, 
but uh, I think we're, we're probably running out of time at this point, um, Governor. Hey, Chad, I want to keep you on schedule. Mm -hmm. Chad, listen, uh, first, I want you to just send us all those questions. We'll get you an answer to every single question, okay? And know that my attention is always going to be to the small business community. That great economy that I love to brag on that was leading the nation here in Arizona was because of our small businesses. It's the small businesses and the people on the line that create the jobs in this country. And I know it better than anyone else. So I'm happy to do this again. Uh, I'm, we can go right to questions uh, next time. But get those questions to us and our team. We'll get you straight answers on, on what we know. Uh, and if we don't know the answer, we'll, we'll do our best to do our homework and, and find it. Uh, but I, I hope we're on the same page of this. And the idea is to deal with the, the danger and dilemma that's in front of us right now and to plan for what's next and what the future looks like. And I really do want Arizona to be the model state for leadership out of this pandemic. And it's going to be our economic growth, development, and prosperity that will be what the rest of the world will see. And I'm counting on NFIB and all the small and medium business owners that are out there and all the people that are going to go in to small and medium business ownership as, uh, as, as new entry-level entrepreneurs. So uh, thanks for all your time for what you do uh, as, as an organization. And I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you all soon, hopefully face-to-face -face when we can all shake hands. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. Uh, and thank you to all the NFIB members. Um, I think with those excellent remarks, we'll conclude today's call. But know that we'll be back. We'll be back again uh, and continue to work uh, work through this. Thanks, everybody.